The first YouTube video I ever made, and as such the first ever HITC7s video, was on the seven weirdest football transfers of all time. That was over two years ago, and I like to think the channel has improved a bit since then. You are of course welcome to disagree. Today is a bit of a throwback then, as a sort of niche subsection of that original HITC7s video. There are certain transfers that cause you to do a little double take, whether it's a shock that the club has managed to pull off the coup of signing a player you'd have thought was beyond them, or equal disbelief, that the club has been daft enough to sign someone clearly unfit to ever wear the shirt. And then there's a third type of word transfer just in the sense there is a club and player that you would never pair, and the deal has seemingly come totally out of the blue. Those are the three types of transfers we're interested in here, limited specifically to incoming Premier League loan deals. Without further ado, here are my seven weirdest Premier League loan deals. Alexander Pato, Chelsea. This is one that falls firmly into that third category of weird transfers laid out in the introduction. Alexander Pato was an incredibly talented young player at AC Milan whose searing pace and sharp eye for goal had marked him out as one of the finest prospects in world football before injuries began to tear apart his hamstring, his thigh and his career. Pato joining Chelsea for £50 million in 2009 would have seemed perfectly normal, but his arrival in 2016 on loan was rather out of the blue. By that time, the Brazilian had been back playing in Brazil for the last three years, meanwhile Chelsea were enduring a miserable attempt to defend their Premier League title. Pato made just two appearances, scoring once, and despite claiming he was keen to make the move a permanent one, no such deal was ever struck. Renato Sanchez to Swansea City a bizarre loan deal all round in the sense that Renato Sanchez's arrival was considered a stroke of genius by Paul Clement, only for the young Portuguese midfielder to be almost totally ineffective in South Wales. Sanchez had joined Bayern Munich in a deal that could have been worth as much as 125 million euros just 12 months earlier, and the idea of him joining relegation threat in Swansea on loan after he won the Euros with Portugal would have seemed more than a little far-fetched. He did link up with the Swans though, were injuries, and a supposed lack of willingness to learn saw him make only 15 appearances and failed to impress in any of them. Swansea were relegated at the end of the season, and Sanchez returned to Bayern Munich. Steven Corker to Liverpool I know Steven Corker has come out in the last couple of years to reveal that he's had one or two mental health problems and struggles with addiction, so I'm reluctant to criticise him, and do of course hope that he gets all the help he needs and is in a much better place now. Nevertheless, I have to include his 2016 loan deal to Liverpool, which looked bizarre even without the benefit of hindsight. Corker had impressed at Tottenham as a youngster and at Cardiff City, but I must admit, I always thought the fanfare surrounding him at that time was a little over the top. By 2016 though, that had all calmed down, with Corker contracted to Championship QPR and having barely featured in a half-season on loan at Southampton. Corker made just eight appearances at Anfield, and only three in the Premier League, one as an emergency centre-forward. He returned to QPR in the summer, and his next two moves were to Dundee and Alan Eospor. Andy Booth to Tottenham Andy Booth's career was a pretty straightforward one, making 393 league appearances for Huddersfield Town, either side of playing 133 league games for Sheffield Wednesday. And then there's just four league appearances for Tottenham Hotspur that stick out like a sore thumb in his career record. The former England under-21 international had scored just three goals in 19 games for second to Sheffield Wednesday during the first half of the 2001 0-2 season when he joined Spurs, and even Tottenham director of football David Pleat didn't seem convinced about the shock one month loan. I hope everything goes through cleanly and he enjoys his time here, Pleat said, as though the striker had just won some kind of competition to get a deal with the club. Booth made four appearances, failing to score during his brief stint at White Hart Lane. Andy Gorham to Manchester United There have been plenty of left-field transfers of goalkeepers to top Premier League clubs, typically as third or even fourth choices, such as Scott Carson to Man City this season. Andy Gorham's loan move to Manchester United was a bit different though, and much more worthy of inclusion in this set. The eccentric English-born Scottish international had a nomadic and rarely dull career, starting for Oldham, Hibernian and Rangers, but never without controversy. He joined Manchester United on loan in 2001, whilst contracted to Motherwell in a move few could believe, and it was as action-packed as ever. Gorham started only two games, getting subbed off in both of them, he fell out with Roy Keane, I know, imagine that, but also started the game in which United won a third consecutive Premier League title. An entertaining couple of months. Kim Kallstrom, Arsenal there was something very Arsenal about Kim Kellstrom's low move to the Emirates in 2014, and particularly in the unusual back end of Arsene Wenger's time with the club. 
A talented midfielder with a great left foot, Kim Kallström won 131 caps for Sweden and spent his best years contracted to Lille. It was whilst he was at Spartak Moscow, though, in the autumn of his career, that Kallström joined Arsenal on loan. It would have been an unusual move under any circumstances, but the fact that Swede was injured and his back injury actually showed up in his Arsenal medical, but the club decided to push ahead anyway, made it an especially odd one. Injured for virtually the entirety of his time with the Gunners, Kallström made just four appearances and only one of them was a star. Andy Kellett to Manchester United Whilst most of the transfers in this seven were wet with the raised eyebrow and the exclamation of a really or seriously, this one was mostly responded to with the question, who's Andy Kellett? Kellett was a 21-year-old midfielder who was struggling to get a game at Bolton Wanderers and had been out on loan earlier that season to Plymouth Argyle. Plymouth would be usurped on transfer deadline day in the winter of 2015 for Keller by Manchester United of all clubs though, as Sadie Yanko went on loan to Bolton as part of the same deal. Kellett made 10 appearances for United's under-23s, whose ranks he had been brought in to bolster, including a defeat, to his parent club Bolton's under-23 side. Unsurprisingly, United didn't opt to make this transfer a permanent one, and Keller is currently without a club, most recently having played for Notts County. That's it for today's 7. Thanks for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and obviously make sure you're subscribed to HITC 7s. Also, if you're watching on mobile, just try tapping your screen now. Apparently that is sometimes required to bring up our little subscribe button and a couple of other videos that YouTube thinks you might enjoy.